Hello and welcome to Byju's exam prep. Welcome to the big news of the day. Before we take up the topic for today's discussion, we have a couple of announcements. First of all, let me wish you a very happy Diwali. And on the account of the festival, tomorrow being a holiday, we shall not be having our daily videos such as CNA daily quiz and the big news. Then on Tuesday as well, we won't be able to bring out the CNA because the Hindu doesn't publish after the festival. But however, we shall be presenting the daily quiz and the big news on Tuesday. But tomorrow at 8 p.m., don't forget to catch our weekly economy this week. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to our Telegram channel for regular updates on current affairs. So with this, let's get started with the big news for today. And the big development is that ISRO has successfully launched 36 satellites into orbit under the LVM3M2 mission or the One Web India One mission. This was a dedicated commercial launch that was successfully executed by ISRO and it happens to be the first major commercial launch of NSIL or the New Space India Limited. So yesterday from Sriharikota at the Satish Dhawan Space Center, ISRO's launch vehicle Mark III or LVM3 successfully lifted off and precisely injected 36 small satellites of one web into low earth orbit as part of OneWeb's commercial project to provide internet broadband services around the world through satellites. See, OneWeb has planned to put in place a satellite constellation consisting of at least 500 satellites. And these satellites are being placed at least in 12 different orbital planes, with each orbital plane having at least around 49 satellites, thus providing for global coverage. And this planned internet constellation is expected to be completed by next year. Through this satellite constellation of around 588 satellites, OneWeb hopes to provide global internet connectivity to cover almost every location on Earth with high-speed broadband connection. This company, which is headquartered in London, was recently bought by the government of United Kingdom and has major investments from India's Bharti Global as well. This satellite constellation project of OneWeb is similar to the Starlink project of SpaceX, which is owned by Elon Musk. And these two projects aim to establish satellite-based internet connectivity, which is likely to become the backbone of the future internet. But however, such satellite-based internet connectivity through a constellation of satellites has raised a number of concerns. As OneWeb and SpaceX place thousands of satellites in orbit, it could create the problem of space debris but the companies have assured that they have put in place mechanisms to deorbit these satellites once they complete their life term. Experts have also expressed concern about a significant increase in terrestrial electromagnetic interference through these thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit, which could potentially interfere with other forms of communication. But despite these concerns, companies such as OneWeb and SpaceX are going ahead with their satellite constellation projects. And now, India is playing a key role in enabling OneWeb to place some of these satellites into orbit. Under the OneWeb satellite constellation, more than 400 satellites have already been placed into orbit and most of these launches were carried out by Roscosmos. But after Russia invaded Ukraine and after Russia was brought under sanctions, these launches had to be suspended and as a result, OneWeb has sought out ISRO's help along with help from SpaceX to launch the remaining satellites into orbit. So ISRO has executed the first of this mission by using its heaviest launch vehicle, which was previously known as the GSLV Mark III. Now the GSLV Mark III is being referred to as LVM-3 or Launch Vehicle Mark III. And quickly it is emerging as the future workhorse of ISRO to replace the PSLV. Traditionally, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, which is capable of lifting lower payloads into orbit, has been the workhorse of ISRO for such commercial launches, including for launching foreign satellites. But now ISRO is looking to scale up its commercial launches and is also gearing up to lift heavier payloads into orbit through the much heavier rocket that is LVM-3. And yesterday's mission has established the credibility of this launch vehicle as this was a very complex mission to launch 36 satellites which had to be precisely injected into orbit. Here in these images, 
you can see the assembly of 36 satellites in the upper stage of the LVM-3 and this was the first time that this launch vehicle was carrying out multiple satellite launches. And with the success of this mission, India has entered the heavier launch vehicle segment of the commercial market. Previously, ISRO has taken up several commercial launches for foreign vendors, but all those launches were carried out by PSLV as the payloads were smaller in weight. But with yesterday's mission, ISRO has established its capability to execute heavier launches through LVM-3 and as a result, the launch vehicle has proved its reliability as it is critical for the upcoming human space flight of India that is the Gaganyaan mission. Because it is the same launch vehicle which is going to lift Indian astronauts into orbit as part of India's first human space flight program under the Gaganyaan mission. So yesterday, ISRO has established the worthiness of the launch vehicle by executing the launch of 36 satellites with great precision by ensuring that they were precisely injected into the right orbit without any chance of collision during deployment. This happens to be the first time that ISRO has executed such a heavy launch as the total payload weight of 36 satellites was around 5.8 tons, thus making it ISRO's heaviest launch till date. This new age rocket that has been fine-tuned by ISRO has a capability to lift around 8 tons of payload into low Earth orbit, whereas in comparison, PSLV could lift just around 1.4 to 1.75 tons into the designated orbit. So as a result, ISRO was seeking out a heavier launch vehicle that was the GSLV Mark III, currently known as LVM-3. And after its developmental flight, it was successful only once during the Chandrayaan-2 mission. But as ISRO faced challenges with GSLV Mark III and the cryogenic engine, India had to rely on foreign launches for heavier communication satellites which were in the range of 2 to 5 tons, such as the GSAT satellites. So as a result, several of the GSAT satellites have been launched by European launch provider Aryan Space, as GSLV Mark III was not seen as entirely reliable for heavier launches. But now with yesterday's mission, ISRO has established the reliability of LVM-3, which is the new name given by ISRO to the erstwhile GSLV Mark III. It is essentially a three-stage medium-lift rocket developed indigenously by ISRO and it is designed to place heavier payloads into geostationary orbit. The most critical component of the launch vehicle is the upper cryogenic engine that you can see in this schematic over here which represents the C25 cryogenic stage where cryogenic fuel that is liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen is made to undergo combustion at extremely low temperatures of minus 180 to minus 250 degrees Celsius and such a cryogenic combustion delivers enormous thrust which is needed to lift heavier payloads into orbit. ISRO struggled with this technology for more than two decades and now finally ISRO appears to have mastered the technology thus leading to the success of the LVM3 project. Now another important topic for your prelims as a result of this development would be New Space India Limited or NSIL. NSIL has been recently established as a public sector undertaking to function as the second commercial arm of ISRO. Earlier, Antrix Corporation was functioning as the commercial arm of ISRO, which was looking after commercial launches, including commercial launches for foreign vendors. But after Antrix Corporation ran into few controversies, in the union budget of 2019-2020, the government announced the establishment of another commercial arm, NSIL or New Space India Limited, which has been set up under the Department of Space through the Company Act of 2013. The Government of India and ISRO have established NSIL with the main objective of enabling private sector participation in India's space sector. So New India Space Limited has been established with the vision of making India excel in providing space-related products and services, with the mission of enabling Indian industries to play a key role in India's space program. The mandate of NSIL includes owning satellites for Earth observation and communication applications and building satellites and launching them as per demand, providing commercial launch services to private companies both in India and abroad and as well as building launch vehicles, offering space-based services, enabling satellite building through the Indian industry, transferring technology to the Indian industry and making spin-off technologies, products and services so that advances in space technology can have a wider impact on the economy. 
So this brings our discussion for today to an end. And if you like the initiative, do support us by liking the video, share these videos with other aspirants, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.